Greg, greetings everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. You have probably heard that we have reached the debt ceiling. That is, this country is not allowed to borrow any more money unless Congress raises the debt ceiling. And according to Mr. Geithner, unless Congress does it by August 2, we have reached a point where we cannot pay any longer our debts. Now, you've probably heard also about the amount. How much are we indebted? It is several trillion dollars. Now, this amount is something which most of us cannot visualize, conceptualize. And so I found the following article very interesting, which was published by Reuters, but also by other papers like USA Today. And I'd like to read to you a little bit from this article dated May 19. It says, President Ronald Reagan once famously said that a stack of $1,000 bills equivalent to the U.S. government's debt would be about 67 miles high. That was 1981. Now, that's already bad because, as we will see, God does not endorse at all going out incurring debts, which then we can't pay back. But this article goes on to say, since then, the national debt has climbed to 14.3 trillion, that is trillion dollars. In $1,000 bills, it would now be more than 900 miles tall. See, at that point in 1981, it was 67 miles high. Now it's going to be 900 miles high. In $1 bills, the pile would reach to the moon and back twice. I have a $1 bill here, very famous $1 bill. I'm looking at the back of this, and of course it says, In God We Trust, something which most Americans today wouldn't endorse, at least not insofar as their practical life is concerned. It's also showing a pyramid and the eye of God allegedly looking at us, looking at everything we are doing. So this article said that if you take this $1 bill and you put another $1 bill on top of it and so on, you will reach a point where you have a mountain which is as high as the distance from the Earth to the Moon and back and again to the Moon and back. And my friends, even that is not enough. Accordingly, we need to even raise the debt ceiling further. Now, that is still interesting, but this article goes on to explain a little bit more what this all means. It goes on to say, U.S. Treasury Secretary Geisner has said the United States borrows about $125 billion per month. That's $125 billion per month. With that amount, the United States could buy each of its more than 300 million residents an Apple Inc. iPad. Now, maybe you don't want an Apple Inc. iPad, so let's go on. It says in a 31-day month, that means the United States borrows about $4 billion a day. A stack of dimes equivalent to that amount. And here's a little dime. You know, you've all seen, of course, a dime. So a stack of dimes equivalent to that amount would wrap all the way around the Earth and still would have some cash left. It's still, that isn't enough. Then let's say in one hour. In one hour, the United States borrows about $168 million. That is more than it paid to buy Alaska in, 19, in 1867, if we are converting this to today's dollars. That's one hour. What about two hours? In two hours, the United States borrows more than it paid France for present-day Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, and the rest of the land obtained by the 1803 Louisiana Purchase. That's how much money we have borrowed. And now we are being told unless we raise the debt ceiling, we can't borrow anymore. We can pay our debt, at least not all of it, unless we do certain things, we are told. We are told that Congress said, no, we are not going to raise the ceiling unless there are going to be cuts in expenses. But my fear is if there are cuts in expenses, it's going to be cuts in necessary expenses. Because, unfortunately, the expenses which are unnecessary, they are probably not going to be cut because there are too many politicians around who like to support these unnecessary projects because these are 
their pet projects. So I have some ideas. I have some ideas. In order to save some money, in order to get some money. First of all, let's cut the salaries and the benefits of all these incompetent politicians we have in this country. And I leave it to you to determine who they are. But I tell you, and you know, we would save a lot of money. Or, if you don't want to cut their salaries, let's raise their taxes. We would get a lot of money if you just look at the incompetent politicians in this country. And then what about these incompetent, unnecessary, detrimental governmental agencies? Let's get rid of those. And again, I leave it to you to determine who they are. And you know who they are, probably and how much money we would save. But nobody is willing to do that because there are too many political considerations involved so that we won't even touch that. You know, the Bible has told us a long time ago, and I'm quoting from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 7, that the borrower is the servant or the slave of the lender. And the time will come when we are not any longer going to be able to borrow and our lender is going to be our master and he will come hard on us. You see when all of this was announced the waves of incredible disbelief reached Europe and I saw a headline in a mass circulation over there built online which is famous for its stirring headlines and its ear-ringing headlines and statements and it simply said Obama land is abgebrannt which means, loosely translated, the land or the country of Obama is burnt. It's burned down. It's destroyed. And then they said, how is it possible that the richest country in the world is now insolvent and bankrupt? You see, they said what most Americans today don't want to accept, that we are already bankrupt. By all technical, economic, legal definitions, we are insolvent. Nobody wants to admit it. Everybody thinks we can go on borrowing and we can live the way we are and everything will be fine. Now let me explain that the Bible has said that things can happen very quickly, very swiftly. People say today, well, America could never go down. The United States of America will always exist. Well, the Bible has said that this is not the case at all. It talks about ancient Nineveh. It talks about ancient Jerusalem. It talks about ancient Samaria. It talks about ancient... Babylon, and it talks about modern Babylon in the book of Revelation. Now understand, modern Babylon is a city built on seven hills. It also represents a system. But God says that the day will come when that system and that city will be destroyed, and it will be destroyed very swiftly. Notice what it says in Revelation chapter 18 and verse 15. The merchants of the things who became rich by her will stand at a distance of fear for her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas! That great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Now I know that talks about the European system, but I thought by analogy it also could perhaps be applied to the American system because the American system will fall before the European system will. And it will happen quickly, in one hour, as it says very suddenly. You see, the Bible tells us why. The Bible tells us why we are in that kind of a condition we are in today. Now, most people don't want to admit that. Most people don't want to consider the fact that we all are guilty for what is happening. God promised ancient Israel that if they were to heed him, if they were to keep his commandments, notice what would happen. Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 6, for the Lord your God will bless you just as he promised you. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. That is, if people were to keep God's commandments, God would bless them. The same is stated in Deuteronomy chapter 28, in verse 12. It says, the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head, and not the tail. You shall be above only, 
and not beneath, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. You see, if the nation, any nation, would heed God's commandments, would live by God's commandments, would live by God's standards, would keep them all, none of the things which we are encountering today would have had to happen. And still, if the nation would turn back to God, things could still be different. But unfortunately, it's not very likely that's going to happen. And God already told ancient Israel, as he is telling us today, what's going to happen, what would happen to them, which did happen to them, which will happen to us if we are not obedient to him. He goes on to say in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43, The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. And it's not talking just about the alien among us. It's talking about the alien in general. Verse 44, He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him anymore. You see, at this point we are still giving aid to other nations. The time will come where we are not going to be able to do that anymore. And we'll still try to keep borrowing. It goes on to say, He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. In the book of Psalms, we read an interesting scripture in chapter 37, and in verse 21, saying, The wicked borrows and does not repay. Now, God calls us wicked if we fall into that category. And we think we can just go on borrowing. We just can go on living the way we are. We just can do the things we want to do, not caring what God tells us in his word. And God tells us, because of that, you are living in conditions which are not good. And let me tell you, my friends, unless this nation is turning around as a whole, its downfall is inevitable, and it will happen quickly and suddenly, and everybody will be even more surprised when it happens. The choice is yours. If you are awake today, at least you make sure that you are not called wicked by God in that you borrow without paying back. That's a shameful analysis which God inflicts on this nation. And because of that, and because of the fact that we are unwilling to obey him, we are facing dire consequences in the near future. Thanks very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. <laughs>